Okay, so what do soil microbes do? Okay, we have all these different groups out in the soil that are doing some amazing things. Okay, and we want to protect this because this is how the whole soil structure works. All right, so we've got guys over here, we've got plants and organic matter, we've got these kind of groups, bacteria, fungi that decompose things, and we've got higher organisms that go up the scale. And so out here in nature, it's like everything else, everything eats something. There's this whole food chain all the way from microorganisms up to us, okay? We all eat something. Without an active organic matter system in the soil, it is not possible to grow crops successfully, no matter how much NPK we add. The soil is a living complex that not only holds the necessary minerals needed for plant life, but also a factory that produces carbon dioxide, digests lignans into humus, provides nutrition, energy for desirable bacteria and animal life, and is the container for air and water. Okay, that's what soils do. All right? So when we look at this, again, this comes back to what's the most important thing for a plant? Okay, so when we have a plant emerge, the carbon to nitrogen ratio of a plant can be 10 carbons to one nitrogen. And as it grows, it's adding CO2 at way faster rate than it's adding nitrogen. So, CO2, 20, 30, 40 to 1, when your plants are mature, they're 50 carbons, 70 carbons to 1 nitrogen, and when they're dead, senescent, and we're going to put them back in the soil, they're 100, 200, 300, 400 carbons to 1 nitrogen. So what's getting added at the fastest rate? Nitrogen or carbon? Okay, and your animals will tell you this, all right? You see a cow out grazing or a horse, what does it like? Tall grass or short grass? Short grass. Everything short. It doesn't like old plants because this is how nature works. You and I are 30 carbons to one nitrogen. That's our ratio. Okay? Peter, please tell me why you are not snacking on my handouts. I mean, what is wrong with you, Peter? Carbon's too high. His paper is 400 carbons to one nitrogen. You don't find that very tasteful, Peter? Very tasteful, but it's... Can you live on that? Why? If you're 30 carbons to one nitrogen and you have to maintain that, how do you do it on a 400 to one nitrogen ratio? You don't. You die. Okay? You don't have the density of nutrition. Simple as that. So when an animal says, I ain't eating that, we don't have its nutritional content there. It's smart enough to know. It won't eat this stuff that's this tall. They can say, look at that stupid horse out there with all that grass touching its belly and it won't eat any of that. Horse goes, that stupid farmer. Doesn't he know I ain't, can't eat this stuff and live on it? He wants to work me hard tomorrow. I'm going to go eat the short green stuff. Get some energy. Get some nutrition. That's why we eat steak. And we eat beans. And we eat lettuce. And we eat apples. is because they're at or lower in our carbon to nitrogen ratio. Okay? We can live on this stuff. So everything functions off of this in, in, in nature. Okay? CO2 is more important to high yield than any other mineral. Okay? Right here. Now, this is how nature works. This is us. This is our bacteria on average is 5 carbons, 1 nitrogen. Fungi, 20 carbons, 1 nitrogen. Protozoa, okay? Nematode. Micro and macro orthopods, okay? All these guys have different nitrogen carbon mineral ratios. Okay? And this is the fascinating part about how God put this biology system together. Okay? Down here, when you start looking at all this, these guys are eating each other like crazy. Why would they do that? Well, we're going to go through a little bit of math, what we call microbial math, and we're going to figure out why these guys eat each other, and what they can't eat and what they can't eat. 
Okay, so this is the hierarchy in our microbial systems. And this is why we need them. It isn't just carbon to nitrogen ratio in bacteria. It's carbon to phosphate, carbon to potassium, calcium, magnesium, and trace minerals. Okay? Everything holds things in different ratios. Okay? Fungi, 20 carbons, 20 carbons to one phosphate, potassium, on down. Protozoa, you and I, our cattle, our horses, our chickens. Okay? 30 carbons, one nitrogen, one phosphate, one calcium, nematode, one to 100 to 1. Okay? So everything's at a different ratio. What happens in nature is we have decomposers and predators. Now, bacteria and fungi eat plant matter. Okay? They eat green stuff. Bacteria is going to eat all your green stuff. Okay, you put out grass out there and it starts to decompose. Green grass decomposes very quickly. If we want to put out high carbon material, fungi at this ratio will start eating more of your high carbon material. And there's groups of fungi that eat things up to 60, 70, 80, 100 carbons to one nitrogen. So, Marty, have you got cedar posts out yep. there in your soil? Yep. How long do they last? Uh, it depends on the pH, probably, right? Okay, but they, do they, what lasts longer, a pine post or a cedar post? Uh, cedar. Okay. How long do cedar shakes last on a roof? A long time. A long time. Because cedar is a thousand carbons to one nitrogen. And there are so few microorganisms that can take in one thousand carbons to one nitrogen and live. There's nothing to eat them. That's why they last. Nothing wants that stuff. But I put something out there that's got low carbon, high nitrogen, it's gone in a hurry. It'll decompose so quickly because it's a food source for a very, very big population of microbes. So out in the, out in the soil world, how does God create mineral nutrition? Remember, God doesn't buy from fertilizer companies, okay? So his fertilizer currency is one organism eating another organism. And this is where God's microbial math is really fascinating. So protozoa is a predator and its main diet is bacteria. So Protozoa is 30 carbons to one nitrogen, right here. That's you and I. It's over here eating bacteria at five carbons to one nitrogen. Okay, so if I'm a hungry protozoa and I got to get 30 carbons, how many of these little guys do I have to eat? Six. Six. Okay, so I go get six. Now, these guys... They only consume about 10,000 bacteria a day. They have a pretty active metabolism. All right? So they're eating a lot of bacteria. Now, when I go eat six of these guys, how many nitrogen do I have? Six. Now, I can't keep six nitrogen or it will kill me. So what do I do? You're right. Poop it out in the soil. And these guys put it back out as NH4, ammonium. Ah. So if I had bacteria, fungi, protozoa, nematode, micro macro orthopod, shredders all the way on up, I have everybody eating everybody, eating everybody, eating everybody. I have this little fertilizer factory going on in my soil. In a wonderful world, that works really well. The problem is these beneficials are very sensitive to environmental toxins. And so when we whack out our protozoa, we have bacteria in our soil. I mean, in a gram of soil, I can find 5, 10, 15,000 grams or 15,000 uh, different types of species of bacteria. Okay? In a healthy soil, I should have. 500 million bacteria 
in a teaspoon of soil. That's a lot. Really, really good ones. I can get up to a billion. And so I don't have just a few bacteria. I have millions of species of bacteria. I have millions of species of fungi. I have thousands and tens of thousands of species of protozoa. And of course, these guys multiply faster than these guys because they get eaten a lot. So everything works perfectly up and down the food chain. So what happens here is protozoa eat bacteria, nematode, and by the way, 95% of the species of nematode are good guys. It's just that we nuked all the good guys and now we deal with the bad guys. Okay? The good guys come over here and eat fungi and they do the same thing. 20 into 100, I got to eat 5. I got five extra, I got five nitrogen now. I got to get rid of four back in the soil. It goes back out. And so now, <clears throat> marry this concept with a plant. And you say, oh, nobody thought about this. This was just an accident of nature. The plant up here. Okay, got the sunlight over here, happy, 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 producing all these photonic rays. The plant picks them up, makes all these cool sugars, okay, which is really carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, makes all these different forms of monosaccharides, disaccharides, oleosaccharides, and polysaccharides, and it puts about 30% to 40% of these out the root system, down in here, and they go out the soil. Now. Your bacteria, you love, love, love sugar. You love sugar. Okay? So you come, and so you're a hungry bacteria, and you come in here and you go, where's all the sugar coming out of these root systems at? Okay? Sugar ain't happening out here. I got to go into the plant. So the plant explodes these bacteria populations. Okay? So if you're a hungry protozoa, do you go looking out here or do you go in here to find your dinner? You go to the buffet. So you go into where the plant root system is. These microbes are right there on the plant root consuming the sugar. So when the protozoa comes in and eats 10,000 of these little guys, he's pooping out the ammonium right on the plant root fiber and it's taken up through simple diffusion or it crosses across the membrane. Okay, All of this stuff, the plant is driving the microbial growth, the predators come in, eat, poop, fertilizer. So these plants are driving the biology and the biology knows where to go get lunch. Because he's not going to decompose plant material. These protozoa are going to go eat bacteria. These nematode are going to go eat fungi. And this is their food source. And so it's a pretty slick system if we can get it into place and get it working. Putting this biology back in there is just absolutely amazing. So every plant that we grow has a fantastic biology system underneath it. Weeds. They love lots and lots of bacteria per fungi. So if I go out there, throw out lots of nitrogen, and I explode my bacteria populations, spray glyphosate, wipe out my fungi, protozoa, and nematode, and I have 5 or 10 or 20 or 50 times more bacteria than I have fungi, what did I just tell my weeds? I created a haven for you guys because that's their zone. High bacteria, low fungi. And you can't get rid of them because nature says, hey, got a job for you. Okay? When I go into grasses, three bacteria to one fungi. Vegetables, I need, for every one bacteria, I need three quarters of a fungi. When I go into our row crops, it's one to one. For every bacteria I have, I need one fungi. Okay, now from here on down is bacterially dominated. Okay, all of these plants 
need slightly alkaline soils. Bacteria produce alkaline glues. Fungi produce acidic strands. So when I get into my vineyards, my blueberries, my raspberries, my blackberries, I start getting, I start needing way more fungi than bacteria because that plant needs an acidic environment. So I can put out elemental sulfur and try to acidify my soil or I can use the fungi to produce the acidic strands and the acidic acids that they put out. When I'm going to grow apples, peaches, pears, and in my fruit trees, there for every one bacteria, I can go as high as 200 fungi. When I go into my deciduous trees, okay, my conifers, 500 fungi to one bacteria. When I go into cedar, there's a thousand fungi to one bacteria. Bacteria is not a microorganism that produces nutrients for cedar. Cedar has very, very acidic soils. And so whatever plant we're growing, there is a microorganism ratio that helps the plant. And it favors that plant growth. Just try putting a blueberry in an 8 pH soil. I don't care if you give it nutrition. That sucker is going to die. It has to have the acidity. Okay, it's just part of what the plant uses. So as we look at all this stuff right here, nature has a method of putting these microorganisms. <coughs> and if we manage the biology, then we don't put bacterially dominated manure on our apple trees. You're going to make them sick. Okay, because they need fungi. <coughs>